The goal of this demo is to show you many nice things you can do with the S3 API on ECS. First of all, I will show you how you can append data to an existing object. The first step is to create a bucket. The response code is 200 as expected. And we can see more details about the request itself. Then I create an object with the content first and I do a get request to check the content of that object. As expected, the content is first. Then I append data to an object and for that I use the range header with the value bytes equal minus one minus. After that, I can check the content of that object. And as expected, the value is first second. This API call is what we call an ECS extension because you cannot do that with the standard Amazon S3 API. You can modify a full object, but you cannot add some data to an existing object. On the same way, we can also update a part of an object with an ECS S3 extension. So again, we start by creating a new bucket. And we create a new object with uh, the content created that time. We just check that the content is the one that we expect. And we do another put request to update a part of the object. And here you see we don't specify the same range. Instead, we specify bytes equal 0 to 2. We just want to update the three first characters. And if we check now the content of this object, instead of being created, it became updated. As you can see here. Now we just clean up, delete the object and delete the bucket. Next one is um, a way to read multiple byte range inside one object. So again, we create a new bucket, create a new object. This time the content is, it is not a sunny day. We create that object and we check the content as usual. Now we not we will not try to modify the object, we'll try to get different parts. So we want to get the beginning and we want to get the end. And we see the two range. It is a sunny day. As previously, we just delete the object and delete the bucket. And we can jump to the next demo, which is showing how to apply retention to an object again. That's an ECS unique extension, unique feature, very useful, allows you to protect your data, making sure nobody can modify the object before the end of the retention. As you can see, we do a put request as usual, but this time we add a header called XEMC retention period equal 60, which means that we cannot modify or delete this object for 60 seconds. In a real world, we'll probably use a longer value than 60 seconds for sure. I try to modify that object, but I got a 409 response code and a clear message telling me that the object cannot be modified or deleted because it is under retention. 
try to do a delete operation and get exactly the same response code as expected. Now we just need to wait a little bit to make sure that the object has been created since more than 60 seconds. And uh, as soon as it will be the case, we'll be able to check that that object can now be deleted. Bear with me a few more seconds. Okay, it should be fine now. So let's execute the request. And as you see, we have a 204, which means the object has been deleted. And because we don't have any object anymore in this bucket, we can now delete the bucket. Next demo, very similar, but that case, we create the bucket with a retention with the same header. That means that any object created in this bucket will get this 60 second retention. So the same idea, we create an object, but in this case, we don't specify any special header. We check the content as we always do. Content is fine, original data. So now we can validate again that this object cannot be modified. For nine response codes as expected and after that we check that we cannot delete that object and we get the same response code again now we need to wait as uh, we've done previously just to make sure that the object has been created more than 60 seconds ago and we will be able to delete that object and clean up the bucket Okay, it should be fine now. So let's execute the request. The object can be deleted. And we are ready to start the next section, which is about applying an extension, an expiration, sorry, to the bucket. So in this case, this is not something specific to ECS. We use the Amazon S3 lifecycle policy and we use uh, more specifically the expiration part of it. So we create a bucket and then we use a put on question mark lifecycle and we specify that we want to enable expiration of object after one day. We create that book, we apply that policy and then we can do a get on question mark lifecycle and we can check the XML output and see that the expiration policy has been applied. Now we can create an object and we can validate that the content is fine. Unfortunately, we will not be able to wait one day to see that the object disappeared, but um, I'm sure you will believe me. So we'll uh, jump to the next one where we will show uh, another nice feature of the S3 API, which is not specific to ECS, but uh, fully supported by ECS, which is called S3 versioning. That's a very good way to protect data, uh, especially against uh, accidental deletion, when you have uh, data that is generally modified. If you only have static data, you can just apply retentions. It's easier, but if you expect to modify the data, you just create a bucket like I do now and you do a put on question mark versioning to enable the versioning with the corresponding XML. 
then you can check that uh, the versioning has been applied to that bucket and we can create a first object with a content version one. After that, we can check the content of that object, which is, as you expect, version one. And we can update the object, which will, in a sense, just create a, a new version. And if we check the content of that object now, what will be displayed will be the last version of it, which is the content version two. We can delete the object. And uh, as soon as this object is deleted, we can check the content of the bucket. So we can list the content. And as expected, we deleted the object. So there is absolutely no object displayed anymore. But we can display the versions of that bucket with a get on question mark versions. And here we will see three versions, one which corresponds to the delete marker, one that corresponds to the second version, and one that corresponds to the original version. So this one is the delete marker. Now we want to get a specific version. So let's say I want to get uh, the original version. So I take the version ID that corresponds to this original version. And I will do a get, but this time I will do a get of the key, question mark version ID equal the version I just copied. And as you can expect, we get version one. Now, if you want to recover the deleted object, you do the same. So you list the different versions and you take the version ID of the delete marker because basically to recover a file that you delete, an object that you deleted, you just delete the delete marker. So here you just do uh, execute a delete request on the key question mark version ID equal the delete marker. And if I check the content of the buckets, now I can see that I have my object displayed back. And if I check the content, as you can expect, I will get the latest version of it, which is version two. If I list the versions, I will still get version one and version two, but I will not see the delete marker anymore. Before I can delete my bucket, I need to delete all the versions that are remaining in that bucket. So I delete one of the version and then I list the versions again to get the last one that is still remaining. And I can just delete that version. Finally, I can check the contents of the bucket, see that there is no key displayed anymore. And uh, I can now delete my bucket. We'll now jump to the metadata search, which is a very interesting feature of ECS that allows you to define metadata you want to index. So in, you just add a header like X EMC metadata search. And here you specify what metadata you want to index can be a mix of user and system metadata. So here I have like a user metadata age, a user metadata username, and some system metadata like the object size. I can also use a get question mark search metadata to see what metadata I decided to index. So again, last modified date, size, create time, and two user metadata. And I create a small object with the content small object and with a user metadata that is edge equal 18. 
Now, if I check the content of the object, I will see that small object content, and I will also be able to see the associated user metadata, edge equal 18. I can now create a larger object, which will be with the content this object is a little bit larger, and the edge is 25 in this case. And if I check the content of this object, I'll be able to see that metadata, but I will also be able to see the content length of this object, which is 34. So the object size is 34. So I will be able to use that now, I run a query to get only objects that are bigger than 25 bytes. And you see, you just use query, so question mark query equals size bigger than 25. And then I can just see that only key number two is returned and only the metadata I indexed I returned when I ran that call. Now I can run another query where I want to get all the objects where the metadata edge is higher than 20. And I also add the option attributes equal all. And when I do that, I get again question key, the key number two as expected, but I get also all the system metadata returns and I would get all the user metadata as well. That's a way to have a lot of information about that object without having to send another head request again. I can now delete um, the first object, then delete the second one, which will allow me to finally delete the bucket. The last demo will be about S3 copy, which is a very uh, nice feature. Again, this one is standard in the S3 API. The metadata search is a, a pure uh, EMC ECS extension, but that one is a uh, standard in the API. So we just create a first bucket, then we create a second bucket. But in this case, we will add another header that is X EMC file system access enabled. So when we do that, we allow file access to the object with NFS or with HDFS. Then I create a first object in the first bucket. And as soon as it's done, I will check the content of this object again and see that uh, the content is data as expected. Now I will use the S3 copy API call to say that I want to copy that object to key two in the same bucket. And I can now check the content of the object key two and see that it corresponds to the same content that I add on key one, which is data. Now more interesting, we can also do a copy between buckets and we can even do copies between a bucket where file system is disabled to a bucket where file system is enabled. I use test bucket three instead of two here because I already used two for the expiration demo and um, I was not able to delete it because I still have an object there. Again, you see the copy worked and now I can delete each object one by one because there are three completely independent objects, but the copy has just been a copy of metadata and the data has been linked. So there was no data movement due to this S3 copy. That's what makes it very, very fast. I can now delete the first bucket and finally delete the last one. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and uh, you've seen the value of uh, ECS and all the nice S3 extensions. Thank you.